next video is storytelling as pedagogy. In this video, we'll discuss conventional pedagogy, a storytelling based pedagogy. We'll also discuss a few examples and discuss why storytelling is useful for pedagogy. Let's look at a conventional classroom. What happens in a conventional classroom is that there's a teacher who is considered to be the source of great knowledge, who is seen as an authority figure, and there are all these children. You know, the children are rewarded when they do their work well. They're punished when they do not do their work well. So the children may not be that involved in the classes, but they are obviously often scared and intimidated and so on. So what happens in a storytelling based pedagogy or storytelling approach to pedagogy? You would probably see something different. Let's look at some examples. Okay, consider this picture. In this picture, you see this question, who loves to splash? This is followed by another picture. And in that picture, you see Irrawaddy dolphins, a beautiful animal splashing in Lake Chilika in Orissa. They are a species of dolphins found in different parts of Eastern India, and they are freshwater dolphins. So in the next picture, you have this question, who loves taking dust baths? Okay. And the answer to that is, in the next picture, you see the Malabar Pied Hornbill taking dust baths. And why do they do that? That is to kill the parasites on their bodies. And this happens in Dandeli in Karnataka. Now look at the next picture. You see this question, who loves sitting in wet mud? What's the answer? The answer is the Indian rhinoceros and they love sitting in wet mud in Kaziranga forest in Assam. Now what's the point of all this? We're just telling you some of those interesting things that these animals like to do. But how, how do they relate to us? That's where this question comes. Who loves to sit snugly or comfortably in their houses? And that is you. That's us, human beings. Okay, so that's how we can compare, we can relate ourselves to all these animals. So this is a lesson on habitats, right? So because you know, you can relate your place of living with the habitats of these other animals, you can learn this idea much better. The teacher can also develop this idea on the basis of uh, habitats and children, the teacher can also ask questions like, can a rhinoceros live in Thar desert? And the answer that the children would give, because they are already primed with this idea, is that you know, they would say no, because you know, rhinoceros needs water, right? So that's how learning becomes more interesting through stories. Children can relate their own circumstances to the circumstances of these animals and they can learn things better. Now let's look at another example. This is from mathematics, but this, it's presented as a, as a story. So in this story, uh, these two little schoolgirls, Jia and Rani, go to a mela or a festival and they want to buy biryani from Rafiq Chacha who sells delicious biryani. They don't have enough money for two plates of biryani. They just have enough money for one plate of biryani. So they go to Rafiq Chacha and ask him for one plate of biryani. So he divides the biryani into two and gives one small plate of biryani to Jia and another small plate of biryani to Rani. So the chicken piece is also divided just as the uh, fragrant biryani rice is divided. And after they finish eating, they're very happy. Now they have to divide the plate of gulab jamun also into two. Right? They have six gulab jamuns in one plate. Now the children wonder, what should we do now? How can we divide this? So they use the spoon and divide it equally. And finally, they notice that there are three gulab jamun pieces in Jia's plate and three gulab jamun pieces in Rani's plate. They also divide the sugar syrup using the spoon. So now, both the gulab jamun pieces and the sugar syrup are equally divided. Now these children, Jia and Rani, as well as the children who watch this story or who hear this story, know the idea of one by two or fractions. So this is not just about one by two, it can be extended to two by three or four by seven or any fraction. So they learn, the children learn the idea of fraction by this very interesting story that they can relate to. Okay, so now let us uh, 
see how this helps you know this is uh, when when children hear stories like this they are emotionally uh, stress free right they are more comfortable they lose their anxiety they are more confident about the learning process they are happier more receptive to learning so this is the idea that you know their affective filter is lowered okay this idea of affective filter comes from the linguist and learning theorist stephen krashen it's a very important idea since the affective filter is lowered the children are more ready to learn and stories just create that kind of atmosphere so now uh, let me also give you one more story just to illustrate how stories are useful in studying languages history social sciences etc look at the story of this uh, poet saint who lived in india about 500 years ago his name was kabir he lived in the city of varanasi uh, he, he was born in a muslim household and he was a weaver he respected both ram and rahim but he actually told people to look within themselves to find god okay so that's a great lesson now the good thing about this story is that you can learn about history you can also learn this very important lesson that you have to respect people from all religions so this is another example of how stories can be useful now let me just conclude by telling you why stories are effective you know the historian yuval noah harari who came up with this very interesting books very popular books also named sapiens and also homo deus made this very interesting observation that storytelling is what makes human beings unique that is very true so we are a species that you know imagine lakhs of years ago some of our ancestors were sitting around the fire and telling stories to inform each other and also to entertain each other even now we do that you know we 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 tell each other stories of science about politics about philosophy and we entertain each other and we also inform each other that's what happens in our classrooms we cannot live without stories as a species so these are some important reasons why we should all adopt stories in classrooms students become more relaxed become more receptive to learning and this is really the way to go thank you